I decided to uh, replace the battery in my uh, spectrum analyzer that backs up the, uh, the RAM and the calibration data and everything. Uh, there's a lithium cell in there. It's one of those uh, not rechargeables, uh, but uh, a lifetime. Uh, they're supposed to be good for eight years. Um, so I figured mine's probably due. Uh, on the back of the instrument is written when the uh, battery was replaced and it was put in March 20th of 1993. So I think it's expand, it's uh, exceeded its eight year life. Um, <laughs> so time to do it. So you take the case off and the first thing you need to remove is a little board uh, that contains the uh, HPIB uh, interface. It's actually HPIB plus keyboard. You can actually hook a keyboard up to this thing. I think it's an IBM, old IBM XT keyboard if I remember right. Anyway, don't want to do that with this one. You take out that card and then you can see the battery underneath. Um, there is a, a battery cell and there actually is a super cap also. So when you change the battery, supposedly the super cap uh, keeps everything uh, good while you swap out the battery, but I didn't trust that. So I put a uh, red uh, clip lead onto a, a, a place where I know the, the battery voltage is, uh, it goes through a, a diode. And I connected a, a 1K resistor to that clip lead and hooked it up to 3.7 volts. The, the battery itself also goes through a 1K resistor, so um, it's like having two batteries with 1K resistors into this circuit so they weren't fighting each other. So once I had the backup 3.7 volts going in, I uh, desoldered the battery, put in a new battery, and everything was fine. And then I decided, well, since I've got it open and I've got the tools and the knowledge, I'll go ahead and change the ROMs. Um, so there's an RF section that needs to be removed. There's four screws that hold that in and uh, you remove two RF connectors and one ribbon cable and then it folds out of the way. And then you can get to the ROMs and there are four ROMs. So it's a 68,000 based uh, instrument. So there are two sets of, of two uh, ROMs in there. Uh, they are uh, 27C010, so the one meg ROMs. Uh, so I took those out. If you ever do this, the, the locations of the ROMs are marked on the PC board and pay attention to those because the, the order is very strange. In this picture from left to right, it's U24, U23, U6, U7. So the 6 and the 7 are kind of out of order it looks like. Um, anyway, uh, they're labeled so take them out. Uh, you have to pull the labels off and put them into a UV uh, light uh, eraser. So I erased them. Uh, they didn't erase the first time, so I had to erase them twice. Uh, they just required a little bit longer. Uh, and then I found some uh, different versions of the software online. And I was having a bit of problem, and I've had this before, where the hex file doesn't match the size of the ROMs exactly. But I thought that would be okay. Uh, maybe they just had extra buffer. I don't know, something weird about it. I've had problems with this before. The binary files seem to work fine, but the hex files don't seem to work fine. But I didn't have any binary files for these ROMs, so I used the hex files. Anyway, I chose a version that was about two years uh, younger than the one I had. I burned those, I put them in, and I bricked. I bricked my spectrum analyzer and I was panicking. I mean, it just was black screen, didn't do anything. It was bad. Uh, now, luckily, I was smart enough to make uh, digital copies of each ROM as I uh, before I burned them. So I, 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 I read each ROM and created a file for each ROM so I could put them back if I needed to. Well, I needed to. So once again, take the label off, put them in the UV eraser, go back, burn all of the ROMs, put them back in, and whew! The spectrum analyzer worked again, but the very first thing it did when it woke up said was uh, using default data. So it had, had erased all of the Cal data in the instrument. Now, luckily, uh, two of my viewers had told me the very first thing you do when you get one of these things is document all of your Cal data. And it's not digitally documented, it's write it down. So let me show you, uh, let me show you that, so in case you ever have one of these things. So there is a, a calibration manual 
uh, for this uh, spectrum analyzer. I, th I think this is out of the Cal, not not the user guide, but the Cal guide. There's an actual big thick manual on calibrating the instrument, and this is chapter three, backing up and reloading correction constants. So if you get one of these, please go through this procedure. It tells you step by step what to do, and uh, and then in the back, while you're going through this step by step, uh, it gives you uh, it gives you tables in the back here. It gives you tables in the back for you to fill out. So uh, you you put down numbers that you cycle through in the instrument. You write down all of these all of these numbers. So these numbers are the frequency leveling for the oscillator. So from four to eighteen. 17 megahertz, uh, you write down all of these cal factors. So this was done at the factory, and it was leveled at the factory. And so you need to go through this procedure and write all of these down. Um, and then if you have a different model, there's extended bands, right? There's higher frequencies. Mine only goes to 1.8 gigahertz, but there are models that go to 26 gigahertz, 40 gigahertz, things like that. So anyway, there are extended tables for all of those. I didn't need to do those. And then there's one more table you need to fill out, which is the calibration for the attenuator. There's a mechanical attenuator in there, uh, and there's uh, five steps that you need to have corrections for, and that's done at the factory, so uh, you write those down. Now, when I um, bricked my instrument and turned it back on and it erased everything for me, thank you, uh, then you'd have to do the reloading section. Okay, so there again, you go through this document, it tells you how to reload, and then you go to yours, and you actually have to type these all back in. Okay, and you type them all back in, it tells you exactly how to do all this. You type them all back in, and then once you get them all in there and you do a save, then you need to calibrate the instrument. So you have to push the cal button and wait nine minutes and come back and save that. So you have to do two saves uh, one save for the edits, and then one save for the calibration, and yay. It's back running again. So it's kind of like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, if you really need the ROM upgrade, then uh, yeah, go ahead and do it. If you don't need the ROM upgrade, uh, I got into trouble. Maybe you'll have better luck than I did. But I do have a new battery.